good afternoon. Um, I, I know you've seen a lot of great content this afternoon and this morning. Um, and before I tell you about HBO, I did see the, the show of hands. Um, so very pleased to see that we have some fans in the audience. Uh, but I'd like to take you through some of our evolution as well. But before I tell you about HBO, why don't I show you? And I have a malfunction, because my sizzle reel is supposed to play, so perhaps someone in the back can do that for me. You're in the great game now. And you have everything you've ever wanted. Since you are old enough to want anything, you have your armies. You have your ships. Dragons. Gods. You have your kings. It's yours. Now and always. Good. I've always loved a good story that told a deeper truth. I want more of that feeling. That intangible thing that comes around once in a lifetime. People say they want to make this world a better place, but we could actually do it. Everyone's always asking me to believe in things. I believe in you. Thank you. HBO is the most successful premium television subscription service in the world. We have over 134 million subscribers. We've built a successful business by staying true to our brand and consistently delivering firsts for our audiences. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about how HBO has navigated and taken advantage of opportunities enabled by evolving technology by looking at three trends. The expanding definition of television, the explosion of outlets, and changing consumer behavior. So what is TV? Show of hands. I bet there's people in this room who have probably never even seen one of those. Um, so, in the beginning, physically and specifically, it was a single-purpose appliance. There used to be one of them, typically. People used to go to it, and watching it was a social experience with family and friends. So, our well-known slogan from 2009 may have been prophetic about the future, knowing that HBO would transcend the then current TV ecosystem. Nah, it was really just a good, slo a good slogan. Today, what we call TV has evolved to be and include so much more. Although the term is used much more generically today, it's an assortment of devices or displays that offer anywhere from a two-inch viewing experience on your mobile device to your big display and anything in between. You can watch what you want, anytime, anywhere. Well, that big display is likely stationary, but what you can watch on it now has infinite options. So viewing is on a mobile phone, your desktop, gaming console, or that large display. As we look to the future, you may not even need a display. It might be holographic. Obviously, this trend has had a major effect on choices HBO has made for its business to ensure we continue to reach our audiences as technology enables more options for viewing. In 2011, we were the first premium subscription service in the U.S. to offer a streaming app, HBO Go. This enabled our traditional cable, satellite, and telco subscribers 
to access HBO content through mobile devices. However, our research indicated that there was still a sizable number of untapped households who were not receiving our programming through our traditional providers. So in 2015, we were the first premium subscription network to launch an over-the-top service, and we still find that audience to be largely additive to our existing subscriber base. The point is, HBO has embraced technology and the consumer's desire to have HBO anytime, anywhere, and any place. So what's next? There's much experimentation going on with virtual reality, augmented reality, and holographic displays. But bringing that experience to the masses is still a bit challenged. Of course, we're evaluating and talking with our content creators about how these technologies may open up new avenues for storytelling. HBO has a reputation for partnering with our creative teams to explore new and innovative ways to immerse our audience into our content. It's still very early days, but we're excited by the possibilities. As the definition of TV continues to expand, so have the outlets that are offering programs today. So turning to the second trend, the explosion of outlets. When you think to just five to 10 years ago, in many markets, you had limited choices for video packages, and they were quite traditional in nature. 30-minute comedies, 60-minute dramas, news and sports. Couple that with just a few, relatively speaking, ways to receive content. Now, with the number of broadband connections getting better every day, the number of choices and providers has just exploded. In the US alone, 90 new subscription video on demand services have been launched through 2016, and that slide's old. Many more since then. The ability to deliver high quality video through broadband has substantially lowered the barrier to entry into the TV business. It also gives existing businesses more shelf space. For instance, at HBO, we have a multilateral approach. We have linear channels, cable on demand, streaming services, and electronic sell-through. We give our fans multiple choices to consume our content. With the increase in on-demand services, we've also seen an explosion in the amount of content being made available to the consumer, both scripted and unscripted. What people call TV today can range from a one-hour drama to a tutorial on YouTube and everything in between. Individuals are literally starting their own channels. I saw that on the panel right before I came up. Um, and that's just going on worldwide. There is a wide spectrum of programming available for every taste. At HBO, these trends have had a minimal impact on our overall program strategy. While there is clearly much more content available and many more competitors, our strategy regarding quality and quantity remains the same. We are curators of the best content in the world. And by its very nature, that suggests it isn't a numbers game. As our CEO, Richard Plepler, is quoted as saying, more isn't better, only better is better. That said, the proliferation of internet-delivered web series and podcasts have become another place for us to source content. Think of it as an incubator of sorts. Three recent examples of HBO shows that began their life on the internet are Insecure was a half-hour comedy on HBO, is a half-hour comedy on HBO that originated as Awkward Black Girl on YouTube. High Maintenance premiered on Vimeo in 2012 and became a series on HBO in 2016. 
and Two Dope Queens, a podcast, was just recently picked up by HBO for a series of specials. But as with other things I've already talked about, this is additive to the existing process. At HBO, we're passionate believers that our company and content should reflect the composition of our audience. It's clear to us that to continue to build the HBO brand, we need more diversity in front of and behind the camera. We're continually exploring new avenues for finding talent and programs to create thought-provoking television. I'm proud of the focus we've put on diversity at HBO. In particular, if you just look at this past year, a number of our most popular shows had female executive producers and showrunners. Insecure, Issa Rae is the executive producer. Nina Noble is a producer on The Deuce. And Julia Louis-Dreyfus is the executive producer of Veep. Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman both were executive producers for Big Little Lies, and for one of the newest entrants, Westworld, Lisa Joy is a writer, executive producer, and director. Might I add that the majority of these shows were also Emmy winners. As we look to the future, it's clear that diversity of individuals, programming, and a variety of outlets will all be to the advantage to all of you. Which brings me to the last trend I wanted to talk about today, changing consumer behavior and habits. I'll start with binge watching. At HBO, while we've made several episodes of a program available at once, it's been limited. Doing so can preclude a holistic entertainment and social experience. So stay with me here. Using Game of Thrones as, as an example, the anticipation, as with most sought-after experiences, is part of the allure. Couple that with one of the few real appointment viewing programs, and when I say appointment, I mean globally. Over 150 countries tuned in at 9 p.m. New York time to simultaneously view each episode. Before, during, and complete Upon completion of an episode, social media is on fire with the conversation, and it just builds from episode to episode. Now, if we made all the episodes available at once and folks binged on it, just like fast food, it would be quickly consumed, but without savoring and sharing with your family, friends, and colleagues. The social aspect is still very much a part of the overall entertainment experience. In fact, even more so. It's just done it a little differently. It may not be everyone sitting in one room together, but it's still sharing with family, friends, and colleagues the world. Not everyone needs to be in the same room, simply the same time continuum. Now, not every program is an event in quite the same way as Game of Thrones. And the first viewing is a point in time Having the ability to go back and binge can be like rereading a good book. Binging is more of an individual experience. Since you don't know who or when others have watched or completed a series, making it very difficult to have that social experience around it. While very satisfying in some respects, not being able to discuss and share can be quite limiting. So getting back to the abundance of program options, how does a consumer decide what he or she wants to watch? There are a couple of fairly simple filters that haven't changed in quite some time. Initial filters are genre. I don't like horror. I'm not big on fantasy. Brand or network fit. Essentially, those brands or networks that typically have programs that you enjoy. Other factors include talent, Producers, directors, actors, and trailers. Is it worth my time? And we also have algorithms based on past viewing habits to help us decide what to watch. But I would suggest that using these filters, you will, you will still tend 
to stay within the lane of those things you already know you like. HBO wants to take you to places you didn't know you would enjoy. We believe picking great stories, no matter the genre, is why people come to us. Keeping with my Game of Thrones example, and very unscientific, there are a large number of people watching Game of Thrones who would filter out fantasy. So how do you reach that person? How do you break through in an expanding definition of television, an explosion of outlets, and changing consumer behavior? And I'll go back to where I started. It's the brand. At HBO, we showcase our strongest attribute, our brand. Brand recognition is essential as the media landscape becomes more and more cluttered. So much has changed, more change will continue, but one thing that will always remain is the value of a strong brand. We're fortunate at HBO to have a strong brand. Our number one priority is to ensure that we keep it front and center, no matter how the television industry evolves. And I thought I would leave you today with um, a trailer of a recent partnership between HBO and Steven Soderbergh. It's a free app that has launched yesterday, uh, but only in the US and only on iOS. But it is the type of experimental things that we're looking at and trialing, and I thought I'd share it with you today. A new storytelling experience. A story that you navigate. There he is, right there. What do you think? A story that lets you go deeper. Joel, hey, I want to come clean about some things. To see the bigger picture. A story with multiple perspectives. And when it's all over, you'll want to look again. Again. And again. Mosaic, a new storytelling experience. Download it now. I think I've lost my mic. No, I haven't. So thank you. Um, this is also a six-part limited series on HBO in January. Little plug. Thank you all for your time.